Hello, students. This is Mr. McAllen again, and today we're going to be talking about a second part of um, closed interval method. In the video that I just uh, published, uh, it was on finding the extreme values on a closed interval, and it's called the closed interval method. It's what we're using. We basically have to check the function values at the endpoints and at critical points. Now, if you didn't see that video, look back one video before this. It's on this playlist. Um, but uh, this video is basically on, uh, they're asking us to find the extreme values of a function, and this function they gave us happens to be piecewise. They're not defining a closed interval. So as a result, I'm not going to be able to guarantee, because the extreme value theorem, um, if the function is defined on a closed interval and it's continuous, the extreme value theorem guarantees us the ability to find a max and a min. Because I don't have that um, uh, given to me, I can't guarantee that I'm going to find a max and a min, but I'm going to use ideas from the closed row method to help me find uh, extreme values. So let's start off. We have a piecewise function, and the first thing we should do is we should um, we have a left part and a right part. So I'm going to just try to draw a little hand sketch to kind of understand what this function should look like. Um, I have 3 minus x, and this is when x is less than 0. So 3 minus x will look like it goes through at 3, and it's got a downward slope. I'll do the, I'll do the function in black so that we can see it. And then on the other side, um, the function happens, this happens to be continuous, so it's very good, because when I plug 0 into this function, I'm open here uh, from the left part, but from the right part, it fills it in, and it's an upside-down parabola. The reason I know it's upside-down is from parent function knowledge, uh, the x squared term is uh, negative, so that turns upside-down. So now the question is, is can I find the extreme values? So the extreme values for this function will happen at critical points. It won't happen at endpoints because we don't have any endpoints defined. So what we need to do is we need to consider right off the bat um, a critical point you should always consider checking is the uh, location of the junction between the two functions. In this case, the function's left derivative. Um, well, you know, the I'll I'll write uh, f prime from the left of x is equal to negative one, and the derivative from the right is equal to, um, so I would take the derivative of this function, I would get 2 minus 2x. So when I plug 0 into this function, I see that I have a slope of, um, I'll do this in blue, I have a slope of, ooh, that's black, I have a slope of 2, and coming into the function I have a slope of negative 1, so because of the difference in slopes, that creates a corner. So I know that's a critical point. So I'm going to put on my uh, list of critical points that x equals uh, 0 as a critical point to check. And I also see somewhere I have a, um, a local max uh, where the function um, goes from increasing to decreasing. So I'm going to find that using calculus. And that's going to be on the right function. So remember, this function is uh, 3 plus 2x minus x squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that derivative, which will be 2 minus 2x. I just did this. I should have just used what I had over there. I'm going to set it to 0. And when I solve, I'm going to get x equals 1. So that's telling me that my other critical point to check, I have another critical point, is 1. Now all I have to do is I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I guess I have a couple things to do. But I just have to plug in. I make a table. I plug in on my function values, my critical points, because I don't have endpoints. And uh, I'm going to have 0 and 1 to plug in. So when I plug 0 into the function, I get 3. When I plug 1 into the function, I get, um, let me evaluate it. So 3 plus 2 times 1 minus 1 is going to be... Uh, 3 plus 2. I don't want to make a mistake on video, so um, so that will be 4. So you can see here that I have found my extreme values. I have a local min at x equals 0, and its value 
is 3, and I have a local max at x equals 1, and its value is 4. So hopefully um, this has helped you understand how to use uh, how to use parts of the close and roll method to find extreme values on the on a piecewise defined function. If you have any questions or would like to see another type of problem, just send me an email. And uh, if I have time, I'd love to try to answer that question. So take care. Have a good day.